This week on Maker Update, a privacy parasite for your virtual assistant, Make Code Arcade, asteroid harvesting robots, a hot glue light show, a spaceship control panel, a laser cut flap cascade, grippers, fitters, and tic tacs. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I've got another fun show for you today. So let's get started with the project of the week. On Instructables, Bjorn Carmen shows off how he created Project Alias. This is a Raspberry Pi based middleman for a standard Google Home or Amazon Echo. It all fits in a 3D printed design that sits on top of whatever device you have. There are two main payoffs for this project. First, if you're freaked out about these things listening to you constantly, Alias will pump white noise into your virtual assistant's microphone when you're not using it, preventing it from spying on you. The second feature is that Alias allows you to trigger your virtual assistant with any custom name you like. And once it's awake, it works just like normal, and when you're done, the white noise kicks back in. You can find the code, instructions, and 3D design files all on the Instructable. It's a cool hack, and tricks like this may be increasingly important as more of our devices start listening in. It's time for some news. This last week, Adafruit unveiled another Microsoft collaboration. This time, it's the Make Code Arcade. The idea is this is a web-based code editor specifically geared towards making little retro arcade games. There are a bunch of examples and lessons and you can play it all right from your browser. Better yet, Adafruit has two guides up on how to make your own portable game hardware for taking your custom games on the go. One guide is based on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. The other uses inexpensive CircuitPython Express boards like the $15 Itsy Bitsy M4 Express. It looks like a fun little sandbox to play in. You can also contribute your own games. I'm excited to see where this goes. For something totally different, I caught this video by Honey Bee Robotics showing off a concept robot called Wine, or World is Not Enough. The robot is designed to harvest its own energy from asteroids until it's ready to blast off to a new location. It's like a space exploration robot parasite, which when I say it out loud sounds pretty nasty. But what I liked about it is its radical approach to creating steam energy and not relying on conventional solar and battery dependent systems. It's worth a look. Now for more projects, John Bumstead has a new one out showing off how he created this matrix of LED columns. And what's amazing is that the secret ingredient is hot glue cartridges. Apparently these make a great medium for transmitting the light from LEDs mounted above and below each stick. The enclosure is made from thin sheets of laser cut plywood along with four plexiglass sheets to make up the middle section. Inside, he's got a strip of 128 WS2811 LEDs controlled by an Arduino Nano. A momentary button and a potentiometer are also connected to adjust the modes, colors, and animations. I think it looks really cool. Another cool toy to play with is this laser cut spaceship control panel by Neil Fiskin. It's a light up interactive prop control panel with all the modes and sound effects any kid would want. The project uses an Arduino Mega and a fun assortment of dials, buttons, switches, buzzers, and a matrix display right in the middle. I've seen a few takes on the ship control panel design before, but this one is definitely a top contender and probably my top choice in terms of documentation and repeatability. For some cool interactive maker art, check out Parker Hale's Analog Future. This is an installed grid of laser cut boards that are interwoven with ribbons to create a cascading effect when they're flipped back and forth. By applying a reflective material to one side of the boards, the result is a sort of analog take on a DLP projector. Also the sound, I'm not sure if I love it or if it would drive me crazy, but I know I'd love to see this thing in person and find out. Parker has a long research article on the piece and the thought that went into it. About halfway in, he shows off some details on how it was created. I'd love to see some other riffs on this design. I have plenty of tips to share this week. Jen, Kate, and Jeremy from Tested have a video up showing how they created this cool interactive miniature model of a light up sign installation. There are plenty of tips to glean from creating realistic shrubs out of foam to creating LED animation modes. A few weeks back, I had the pleasure of attending the first plotter people meetup over at GitHub full of pen plotter art enthusiasts. There were two great talks from that night from Lenore Edmond and Sher Min, and they're both up on YouTube now to check out. The Hackaday Circuit Sculpture Contest is now over, but the 3D printed gears, pulleys, and cams contest has just begun. If gears make you happy, give it a shot, or at least follow along as the entries come in. I'll probably update you closer to the February 17th deadline. Through the Adafruit blog, I learned about the arcade console and cabinet designs of Love Holton, the designs 
are incredible. If you ever need a little design inspiration for a project design or enclosure, bookmark this site. On Thingiverse, I found the work of XYZ Aiden. He recently published this design for a print-in-place solenoid gripper. It looks like a quick and useful way to add a simple grip attachment to a robot design. Digging back through his other designs, I found a 3D printed PVC pipe connector for making an icosahedron. The simplicity of this geodesic structure requires the same connector at each joint, making it simpler to assemble. It also means that you can make as big or as small a structure as you want, so long as all the pipes are an identical length. Also on Thingiverse, Haku3D posted this design that fits a small reel of solder into a Tic Tac container. He includes variations that fit a few different versions of the Tic Tac container. It's a quick print, and even though it was designed for solder, there's no reason you couldn't use this for string or even hookup wire. Finally, for my cool tool this week, check out my review for the Vice Grip 4-inch locking pliers. They're 16 bucks and they're great for quickly clamping things together, straightening out wire, tightening up brake cables. They get a lot of use in my shop and they're small enough to fit in your pocket. Maker Fairs! This weekend we have Nuremberg, Germany. On February 2nd there's Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And then Maker Fair Kuwait running from the 6th through the 9th. Also Palm Bay, Florida on the 9th. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up or leave a comment. Get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week. It's a great way to stay on top of each week's show. And I volunteer to do the show because I love doing this show. But it is my Patreon supporters who really help keep it running. So if this show does something for you, consider checking out that Patreon link and chipping in. All right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.